Okay, man, so game one, Nuggets, Suns in the books. Convincing win from the Nuggets and then some. Real quick, yeah, my Grizzlies pick was not the pick. I should have just stayed with the Lakers, but uh, let's appreciate Jamal Murray and his shot making first off. I think my favorite play was one where the TNT like had a weird angle on it, but he got like a screen from KCP very quick in a possession, and he was able to get a Kogi off of him for a second, led to a pull-up three. The one in the fourth quarter just now where I think it was like Jokic and Murray faking a handoff action. I'd have to look at it again, but it was basically Jokic at the top of the key, and then before I know it, Murray is relocating off ball to the left wing. Jokic hits him in stride. That's when That one's for a pull-up three. We had turnaround jumpers over Landry Shamit. There was a turnaround jumper over Torrey Craig, where Craig was playing good defense, and then Murray just kind of made it anyway. That one was off of a, a screen where Craig was able to get around the screen a little bit. And then, of course, just that wild layup in transition with KD all over him. And I think KD's help defense was pretty interesting in this game, but uh, that's the first thing, Jamal Murray. And, you know, the next thing you could notice is like, well, were there a lot of double teams on Murray? Unless I'm just crazy and completely forgot what I just watched, it didn't feel like there was a whole lot of extra attention on Murray, like consistently play after play, right? And I think that does speak to a little bit of how the Suns' mentality was defensively in this game, where... Once again, unless I'm just dumb and forgot what I just watched, it didn't feel like the Suns had a double Jokic the second he gets the ball sort of mentality. Like, I remember one where KD, he helped off of, like, Gordon, but it was like once Jokic was kind of committed to the shot, that sort of thing. And, you know, like, within Aiton's drops on the Murray-Jokic stuff, like, Jokic had a couple of floaters that he made. He had a couple that he missed. It just felt like the Suns had the mentality of, like, we're not going to get torched on the backdoor cuts and all that actions that the Nuggets run. We more so want to dare you guys to make shots. And another version of that was like KD kind of sagging off of Aaron Gordon at times. And I do think KD was a good help defender in this game. And that's something that they're probably going to lean on more, right? However, Aaron Gordon also made, what, three threes with KD playing off of him? Gordon also had that stretch where he basically just ran through Jock Landale and then Torrey Craig on another play to get two layups. But it's just like, man, if Gordon is going to make those shots and he's like the one guy in the starting five with the Nuggets that you're going to sag off of a bit, that's just tough to deal with if you're Phoenix, you know? Besides that, the offensive rebounds, I mean, those are going to be massive in this thing. And that leads a little bit into the math conversation with the Suns. And we'll talk about their offense and the Nuggets defense. But uh, the Suns had some weird turnovers where like KD's getting stripped in the post or just it felt like there were a couple plays where like they had an opportunity at half court, but then they would turn the ball over again. Like that's like some bad break stuff that you just hopefully clean up. Okay, let's talk about the Suns' offense, or the Nuggets' defense. So, they, for the most part, had Jokic at the level of the screen on Devin Booker and Kevin Durant uh, screens from Aiton, and DeAndre was able to get a couple of mid-range jumpers off of that. It felt like it was mostly in the first quarter, and, you know, of course the Nuggets are going to have somebody helping from the corners and all that, and, uh, you know, there were a couple plays, I mean, I'd have to go back and look at some of the Suns' makes, but there were a couple of plays, there was one where, like, Booker made a skip pass off of that play to Torrey Craig. Craig makes the three. Okay, cool. There was another where the ball started pinging around off of the you know screen with Jokic up high and the guy playing off from the corner. It eventually gets in Chris Paul's hands. He misses the three, but I liked that shot. And I just thought to myself, man, if the Suns are not going to be able to consistently get those types of shots, you know, just open threes or stuff at the rim off of the plays where Jokic is at the level of the screen and then there's somebody helping from somewhere... I just don't know if they're going to be able to score enough points, given how good Denver's offense is. Now, within that, look, Murray made some shots. They're going to hope that Gordon doesn't make a couple of his threes with KD playing off of him. I get it. Uh, Now, at the same time, like, Jokic missed some shots that he'll normally make in this one, so okay, that's the other end of it. Uh, Now, we did see Jokic in a drop for at least a little bit, mostly in the third quarter, where CP was able to get, like, two or three pull-up mid-rangers on Jokic, and that's interesting. You know, I wonder if the Suns will lean on that a little bit more and just see how Denver reacts. Now, to be fair, there was another time they did it, and Jokic was higher up on the screen that time, so that might have been the quick adjustment for them there. But I would just wonder if you lean on that a little bit, like, what does that do? Now, the flip side of that is, those are plays in which Booker and KD do not have the ball as much, and to speak on those guys, I mean, they're great players, okay? They are individually going to get buckets this whole series, whether it's isolations or whatever, but two guys playing great doesn't automatically mean that the offense overall is great, and... I mean, I think it's just really tough to ignore the three-point attempts. They shot 23 threes in this game. They had five three-pointers in the first half. If you did that for the regular season, the 23 threes, you would be last in the league by five three-pointers a game. And, you know, within the game, sure, there were some interesting things. Like, I thought KD in the post with Devin Booker one pass away. Like, that's interesting. That's the type of thing where the Nuggets are going to be like, do we really want to help on this? Probably not. 
It also felt like they got good things out of just those guys sort of isoing on the elbows or whatever. Like, it's not really an indictment on those two's talents. It's more just like, if those two, as well as CP, are just going to have a preference to take the mid-range, and they're all great at it, we all know this, but then you also combine that with, like, Torrey Craig, and, I mean, look, Craig was going off in the Clipper series. Maybe he's still got that in him. I don't know. But then a Kogi and, you know, Terrence Ross is just not really playing. He got garbage minutes, and, I mean, at the best moments of his career, he's been a pretty damn good shooter. TJ Warren's just not playing, like... It's just going to be tough to get enough points up on the board. Now, again, they got killed in the offensive glass, and the turnovers also killed him as well, so there's some things to clean up. The other thing is DeAndre Ayton, and, I mean, what, Ayton? He ended up with 14 points on good efficiency, and, again, there were some mid-range jumpers for him there when the Nuggets are putting two on the ball. Okay, cool. There were stretches of this game where they just had, like, a guard on him. Like, it was KCP or Bruce Brown. I felt like it was mostly when Jokic was not in the game. The Nuggets decided to go small. And I'm pretty sure Aiton was able to get like at least one or two buckets in those situations, but it just felt like there was a lost opportunity there. And once again, that'll lead to the whole conversation. Is he being aggressive enough? Are they looking for him enough? All that stuff. All I know is he had post-up opportunities with like KCP on him. And I think one time he like fouled him trying to get position, so okay. But the other thing is like, look, if Jokic is going to be high up on these screens, which I anticipate that's how they're going to do it because that's how they did it on their best stuff in the regular season, as I've said like nine million times now. Um... You would think that there's more opportunities for rolls to the basket for Aiton and not just those 15-footers right now. Again, the Nuggets are going to be helping. They're going to be bringing guys off of Craig or Kogi, whatever. But it's like, you know, what if you get that screen and then you swing it to the wing or the corner or whatever? So it's like Booker then kicking it to, like, whoever's in the corner or if KD's getting the screen or whatever. Then, like, can you find Aiton on the roll that way? These are the questions the Suns are going to have to figure out. But uh, game one, yeah, Denver looked good. Also, I don't want to forget this, Bruce Brown as well as Christian Brown were fantastic with Bruce working off of screens, which was something the Nuggets encouraged him to do this season. You know, I think he had like at least one really tough floater in that situation uh, coming off of a screen. And also Christian Brown, man, I don't know how many points he's going to score this series, but he's just going to matter. Like he's going to be just mean as hell on defense. And the dude had four steals. Like I know the Suns are going to leave him open. They're going to dare him to make shots. And we'll see if he does. But like the dude had four steals in 14 minutes. 